we cannot wake up every morning and say, okay, let's mo let me reinvent the world and, and le le let me start all over again because we're not going to make progress. Think about the, uh, the Big Bang. We thought that it explains everything. Immediately, once there was the theory of the Big Bang, people asked what has been before that. And then, and then a cosmologist said, you can't ask what happened before the Big Bang because time itself was created uh, at, at that time. Does that spell, uh, dispel the mystery? I think that it makes it even more mysterious. There is a beautiful book by, by Dawkins, Unweaving the Rainbow. So uh, you know, uh, Dawkins, who is a very um, um, militant atheist, said, look, actually there is nothing mysterious in our universe. Okay, uh, science just sho shows you how the rainbow is beautiful, but uh, it dispels all the mystery. No, it does not. I, I'm thinking about the way Dawkins tried to explain why our universe obeys such beautiful mathematical laws. And he said, here is an explanation. You know Darwin's theory? Darwin's theory explains life. So you ask about the universe, here it is. Universes give birth to one another. Universes die. So you have an evolution of universes. We live in a universe which is rich enough to host life and intelligence. And intelligence. Immediately, the question comes: If there is such a universe, if there is such a natural selection of universes, there must be a multi, uh, some kind of a hyper universe in which this lawfulness exists. And then, the same mystery that we have ever since Plato just comes back to us: How is it that the world is so rational? Or, as Einstein said. The most incomprehensible thing about the universe is that it is comprehensible. We cannot wake up every morning and say, okay, let's mo let me reinvent the world and, and le le let me start all over again because we're not going to make progress. It needs to be some level of so steps. We need to go through steps and there is some good enough approximation on which we rely until the point where we realize, okay, that wasn't good enough and I'm going to embrace it. Uh, so that process can be emotionally painful, <laughs> we all know. but also it is healthy to have some level of inertia to keep some stability there. Um, but that shouldn't be confused about too much. It doesn't mean that it's absolute and it doesn't mean that it's fundamentally rigid. Um, so it may need a few generations sometimes, so a generation of, of a scientific generation, not human generation, but it needs the thought process to go through. And also we need to um, to be able to see how it compares with the existing models. Um, you know, the notion of doing better. What does it mean for a theory to do better than another theory? Uh, you always need to go back and, and relate to the world and seeing how, how, much it, how many prediction it has. You mentioned inertia. Think about relativity. If there are no black holes, then general relativity is wrong. Because all calculations show that when there is enough mass somewhere in the universe, there must you must have a singularity. Have somebody proved that there are no black holes? That, that would be a disproof of general relativity. But once black holes exist, they also show that relativity is wrong because what happens within the black hole is something that relativity cannot tell you. It gets all, all kinds of infinities. So this is what is so beautiful about science. Every theory just shows you where it ends, where it can no longer answer. It's limitations. And it's, an invita it's a limitation, and this is also an invitation, invitation for the next theory to come. Uh, we have, I've, I've been talking so far about physics, but let's think about mathematics. Mathematics, we consider it to be the supreme science where you have the absolute truths. And then the greatest revolution in mathematics was by Gödel, who showed that there always will be, in any theory, there will always be assertions that are true, but you cannot prove them. So you need the, a wider theory to prove them, but then that wider theory will uh, again have assertions. Uh, Gödel's incompleteness theorem is one of the greatest achievements of the human mind that I think, at me at least, that we do not really comprehend how uh, deep it is and how truthful. Somehow I'm a little bit more skeptic that we, we are curiosity driven, but deep down, we're still looking for applications in some sort or mm. another. And sometimes this application can be technological application. They can be there tomorrow. Um, I, I'm not at all waited to that. I'm, I'm happy for application to be there in a thousand years. I'm happy for there to be no practical application in our a, in a, in a life. No, no benefit to me directly other than the beauty of it. Um, but there is some application. It has to be some application in how 
again, we use it to connect to the world. So it has to be in such a way that we are able to use it to make predictions and, and do something with it, as, as you mentioned, do something better with it. Otherwise, I think it's not, it is not science in, to some level. Otherwise, it's, 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 it's atheistic, which, which has some, uh, some drive to it as well. But when we do science, there is this level of applicability to how we relate to... To continue watching this video, click the link in the top left or in the description below. Or visit iai.tv for more debates and talks from the world's leading thinkers on today's biggest ideas.